Hey there, and welcome to the uh, the end of week six. So we're going to work through the project in this video. Um, so hopefully you've already read through the um, input tutorial or watched through the input uh, video, and you now know how to create um, interactive sketches in P5.js. So to practice that, you are going to create an interactive sketch. So what I'm looking for in this project is at least five input variables or functions, and to sort of refresh your memory on what those are, um, best place to look is the P5 reference, and then check out the events section, which is uh, sort of towards the bottom. Um, so in the video, I talked about a few mouse uh, variables and functions, and then a few keyboard uh, variables and functions, but there are other types in here. So for example, I'm pretty sure acceleration is for like a phone. A phone has like an accelerometer in it, which measures like the orientation of the screen. So I've actually never played with that myself, but that could be a fun thing to, to play with. Um, or similarly, there's like um, for touch screens, you can get like multiple touches that might be fun to play with. But it's also totally fine to stick with the uh, mouse and keyboard uh, event variables and functions. There are plenty to choose from, so um, pick five of them and and just kind of kind of explore them uh, in this project. So how I would start is first of all maybe just read through a few of these to get a sense of what your options are so for example like what is this p mouse x thing and you know maybe click through it and um and familiarize yourself with it so I'll maybe check it out and okay it looks like I can move across move the mouse across the canvas to leave a trail and okay I'll do that and you know that's kind of cute kind of kind of fun kind of trippy and that might be inspiration to to use this particular variable or uh, I don't know let's see like uh, mouse wheel for example maybe I'll click in that and just see kind of how it works and um, it's kind of goofy because my, my mouse wheel is uh, locked to the outside of the screen but um, you can kind of see it if I try to keep my mouse in actually let me move all of this into the editor so I can kind of look at it over there so I'm just going to paste the example code just so I can run it and play with it. So now I can maybe move my mouse wheel to, um, it looks like I'm resizing a uh, square. So might be something to play with. Um, I think my, my mouse wheel kind of clicks to uh, like larger uh, blocks. So maybe this example isn't great for my mouse. But anyway, click around and, and explore the, the reference to get a sense of the kinds of things you can do. That's how I would start as step one. Uh, the next thing I might do is check out uh, the examples section of happycoding.io, go to p5.js, and then scroll down to um, input. And there are a few examples here. So I'll choose one kind of randomly, um, mouse ripple, for example, uh, this code kind of mixes a couple things. It mixes some concepts we learned last week with animation with some concepts we learned this week with um, input and um, combines them into one thing. So now I can click around in my canvas to show an animation where I click. So let me click there. And you see that there's kind of this ripple effect. It's kind of like you're looking at water, maybe. Um, I can click around a bunch of times and uh, you kind of relocate the center of that animation. Um, so you can click around in these examples to get kind of a sense of the kinds of things you can do. Maybe that will help with, uh, you know, spark some inspiration. Or I gave you some example code here as well that you can check out. So paste that into the editor and play with it. And I'll run that. And it uh, looks like if I press my mouse, then I draw sort of a random colored circle. And if I press my key, then I clear out the previous frames by calling the uh, background function. So these are just some examples of things you can do, but I encourage you to to come up with something yourself and you know get creative so 
how I might do this is I might, you know, first of all, like I said, click around and I might kind of pick a few. Uh, I haven't done that ahead of time, to be honest with you. So I'm going to do that like right now. Um, I might, you know, maybe I'll just stick with kind of the old reliables because my guess is that most folks uh, watching this are going to want to stick with kind of the, the, the ones that they're most comfortable with. So I'll probably stick with mouse X, mouse Y, maybe key or key code, maybe mouse pressed, key pressed, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then maybe I will, you know, I have a few ideas. Maybe I'll make like a simple like paint application. So kind of similar to Microsoft Paint, but instead of clicking around in, in Microsoft Paint, I'll be clicking around in my own sketch. You know, maybe that'll be fun. A um, few ways I could do that. Maybe I can like click around in the keyboard to like change the color, or maybe I even want to go with size. Um, yeah, I mean, let's try size. Let's just see how it goes and we'll see if it uh, ends up working or not. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is maybe I will always draw like a circle at at the mouse position. So first of all, I've, I've opened up P5 Editor and I have my handy uh, gray canvas. Let me start by drawing a circle at mouse X, mouse Y, and maybe I'll give it a size of, I don't know, 25 or so. And I'll run that and okay, I've got my circle. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, maybe I will move my call to background uh, to setup. So I'll say background and I don't know, I'll give it a like a gray, dark gray uh, color to start with. So now I will see my circle um, sort of uh, build up over time. So instead of clearing out the frames each time, maybe I'll build it up. Totally optional really depends on what you want to do, but I think I'm feeling that right now. Um, so maybe the next thing I want to play with is, can I change the size of this circle? Maybe based on a couple things. Uh, I could just play with like another mouse X variable here. So maybe I'll hit and just try that and see what happens. So now I'm drawing a circle at zero, zero. What happens if I kind of move my mouse? Does it get crazy? Yeah, it gets really big the bigger I make it. And you know, maybe that's fun. Maybe, uh, could maybe do something like take the average of them or something. Um, I could also change it over time or maybe I'll randomize it. So I could say like random, like 100. So now I'm drawing a circle that's a random size between zero and 100 and, you know, maybe that's fun. But in order to sort of, you know, explore the, the space of getting input, maybe I'll base this off of input instead. So maybe I'll create a variable and I'll call it maybe like circle size or something, circle size equals, and I'll start it out at something like 25 and now I'll say circle size here. Um, so now this is getting kind of at the idea of like my, my sketch has a state, in this case it's a circle size variable and it's always 25. So now what will happen if I like change this? Maybe I'll change it in like a key pressed function. So function key pressed. And I'll say maybe if, uh, and you know, I kind of know these ahead of time, but if I didn't remember ahead of time, like what uh, function to define or what variable to use, again, the P5 reference is always your best friend. Um, so key pressed is here, key is here, and you can get no more information uh, that way. So here's an example that uses key code for the arrows, but I think I want to use uh, the key variable, which I can learn about um, if I can find the thing. Yeah, there it is. Uh, you know, you can also, of course, go to the the uh, content for this week, and it's in here somewhere. The key variable, um, and actually, here's the kind of code that I want to I want to steal. So back to my code, I want to say if key and then double equals, and then maybe, I don't know, uh, W, uh, then I want to say circle size, I'll make it bigger, circle size, like plus plus. And then maybe I'll say like else if, actually, let me just test that. I've written a few lines of code here, so let me test that this works. Uh, I can only make my circle bigger right now, well, hopefully, um, but let's see what happens. So now I have my circle and I'm drawing it. So let me like press the W key a few times. So W, 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 W. And is that getting bigger? 
no, let me click over here first. Maybe, yeah, okay, there it goes. So I had to click over into my uh, canvas to like get the keyboard focus. But after I did that, then yeah, it looks like as I press W, um, my, my uh, circle does indeed get bigger. So that's kind of cool. Um, now I want to maybe make it smaller. So I'll say else if key equals um, what S maybe. So I'm using like WASD. And if it equals S, then I'll subtract some circle size minus minus. And that's the same thing as subtracting one. It's just kind of a shortcut for it. So now I can make my circle both bigger and smaller. So let me go bigger and there it is. I can move my uh, circle all around and it works. And then maybe I'll do like S to make it smaller and there you go, it's getting smaller, cool. And that uh, that sparks a certain amount of joy. I wonder what happens if I make it really small. Will, it get, uh, will something break if I go negative? Oh no, actually it just gets bigger. That's really funny. So as it goes negative, it, I guess it, uh, I guess P5 is smart enough that says if you give me a negative size for my circle, I'll still draw it. And okay, so I don't have to worry about it going uh, less than zero. So that's a nice, that's a nice safety feature. Um, let me see how many variables in stuff do I have so far. I have one mouse X, two mouse Y, three key pressed, and four key. I've used key twice, but uh, I'm, I'm counting like individual usages of them. So one, two, three, four. So I would need one more and maybe to do that. Maybe let's see. So I've got, uh, maybe I'll just go back to the reference and, and remind myself of what some of my options are. Um, so actually I kind of want to play with like mouse, uh, maybe like double clicked or mouse wheel or something. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll play with mouse pressed. I think that's going to be a common one that people, uh, want to, want to experiment with. So mouse is pressed. I mean, um, mouse is pressed. Uh, right now I'm always drawing a circle whenever I draw the, uh, whenever I move my mouse. And maybe I'll just add an if statement here. So I'll say if mouse is pressed, then I draw my circle. Otherwise, I, I do nothing. So let's see what that does. So now I have an additional variable in my sketch. And I've just changed my code so that my circle uh, function call here is inside of my if statement here. So I'm going to run this code. And now as I move my mouse, Nothing happens until I press my mouse uh, and keep it held in. If I let go, then I will uh, stop drawing my circles, and that's cool. Um, so let me draw some circles. Can I type W while I'm holding my mouse down? I can. Okay, so W while I hold my mouse down makes my circle bigger, and S while I hold my mouse down makes my circle smaller. Um, you know, from here I could do other things. I could say like maybe if I double click, so what's it called? Function double click or double clicked? Probably double clicked based on mouse press. So double clicked. Maybe if I double click, I'll clear out the uh, the, the uh, backgrounds. Double clicked. And here I'll just say background 32 so that when I double click, it'll, it'll clear out the old frames. So I'll draw some circles and I'll increase my size and maybe draw some other circles. And now I say, you know what, I actually want to start over. So now I will double click. Let's see if this works. So yeah, if I double click, then it clears out the background. Um, so now I have six, I think. I have mouse is pressed, that's one. Mouse X is two. Mouse Y is three. Key pressed is four. Key is five. And double clicked is six. So at this point, I'm going above and beyond. I you know, personally enjoy this, so I'm tempted to keep going. But for the sake of not making this a 30-minute video, um, I'll kind of stop there. From here, I might do something like play with color where I type different things to change the color. Maybe I type something to change, like maybe I don't want to draw circles. Maybe if I type a letter, I change it to a square, for example. Um, I could get into like other advanced um, techniques like where I click in one place and then I click in another place to draw a line instead. That's doable based on you know stuff you know. You would use variables to store the, the first click and then on the second click, you would draw from the first point to the second point. Um, all of that's doable with uh, with stuff that we've learned about in class. So those are some things that I might explore next, but um, 
my goal in this video was not to like just play around for 45 minutes it was to show you how i would get started um, so what i did to summarize is first i would have read through you know the content obviously and then i would have looked through the reference to get an idea of the kinds of things i can use maybe look through the the example section on happy coding look at the example section uh, on this page and kind of get a sense for the kinds of things I can do. And then honestly, I just kind of played around for a little bit. I chose some variables and I threw them in my code and I, I uh, saw what, what worked or what sparked joy and, and what didn't and kind of built it iteratively from there. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I wanna leave it there. Uh, hopefully this helps you get started, but uh, as always, the, the goal here is for you to uh, get creative and to play around with the um, various uh, options that you have. So uh, I am looking forward to seeing what you come up with. I'll also mention that this is the last P5 project that we'll do. So uh, after this, we're gonna start learning about um, HTML and more like kind of traditional web dev stuff. So if you are enjoying P5, then go for it in this project. This will be the last time that we play with it. So um, feel free to you know, stretch your muscles and re revisit some of the other um, concepts that we learned about, like mixing animation with input, for example. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for five either variables or functions from uh, this events section. So really anything from any of these lists. And other than that, go nuts. Uh, all right, I'm going to end there. Look forward to seeing your projects, and I will see you in class.